Hey everyone, it's Christine here. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about calling in your soul tribe. And I got this inspiration pretty forcefully, I should say, from spirit, because I was not planning to record or create any content today. But I felt strongly um, urged, compelled is the word maybe, to do this. And I think it's important right now because not only due to the pandemic that has been ongoing for the last year and a half, but I think because of the different ways many of us have disconnected from one another, not just collectively and in a community form, but also individually in our own lives. Some of us may have connect, disconnected with our own selves and are just now reconnecting to ourselves or finding our way back to ourselves. Others may have uh, introduced new connections in their lives, etc. There's so many reasons. And I strongly felt after marinating with this idea and a bunch of ideas, I should say that uh, spirit sent, <laughs> I realized the community is at a forefront. I feel like 2022 is uh, the year that's going to help foment a lot of this and help bring people together to connect to their soul tribes. And so without further ado, without further going on and on, because I could do that and ramble, let's dive into the steps. And I should say quickly, very quickly, I didn't even define what soul tribe was. But for me, a soul tribe is a group of people. It could be platonic or romantic. So this includes friends, family, work relationships, romantic partnerships. I include them all in my soul tribe. These are people that get you and that connect with you at a soul level and energetically. These are people that accept you for who, you're, for who you are. And so you can use any name to denote your group, friend, community, tribe, soul tribe, your people, whatever it is. And you can include one particular type of people like uh, platonic friends or romantic relationships or just family or whomever. But this is how I denote it. Okay, now we can officially dive in. Step one, to call in your soul tribe, your people, the people you connect with, first set an intention. And for me, this is what I said. I said out loud, I set the intention to call in my soul tribe this year of people who energetically connect with me and who get me. And I left it pretty broad. I didn't specify how I would meet them, where I would meet them, what these people look like, or any other parameter. I'm like, you know what? This is where I actually release control. <laughs> so to the universe, do your magic. I will meet these people in the most unlikely places, whether it's at the grocery store, buying cereal, or maybe waiting in line somewhere, I don't know, anywhere, or even online. And I let the universe do its magic. You can set this intention by writing it down or by vocalizing it, and you can do it to yourself, to a higher power, to the universe, to your spiritual guides, your team, your spiritual team, or whomever. Once you set your intention, we go into step two. Evaluate your core values because what you want in others is a reflection of you. So get clear of what your values are. What are your top three to five core values? Because usually those we surround ourselves with, we tend to share similar values on. Or with, I should say. I don't think that was grammatically correct. <laughs> I'll give you an example. My top three core values include authenticity, honesty, and vulnerability. And I realized I truly value valued connections with others who demonstrate these as well. And they were really important to me because I want to present my true self, my authentic self, and I want others to accept me for who I am. If not, the connection's not gonna work. <laughs> and likewise, I want people to bring their true authentic selves. I don't want them to dim themselves, to make themselves small, hide themselves to impress me to do any of that I don't need pandering or any of that I just want people to be their, their true selves and so that really helps in not only discerning when people come into your lives who is meant to stay and who is not but also helps you call in on that energetic frequency those people that uh, you really want to connect with or that connect with you step three embody these core values be them, do them, live them, but most importantly, practice them. This is especially important if these core values or any of these core values are new. For example, I'll take 
vulnerability. I was never an emotionally vulnerable person. I could not express myself effectively or in a healthy way. And a lot of times I would uh, deal with things uh, on my own, become resentful, passive aggressive, and very detached and cold with people. And that wasn't who I was, but I did not know how to effectively do this otherwise. And once I learned to, obviously, I had to work on some healing on my own. Once I went through this and I also got clear about what being vulnerable meant to me, about really expressing truthfully um, what it is that you want to say and doing this in, through communication in a healthy way, uh, I realized this is something that I really valued in my own connections and I really valued vulnerability in other people. But then, then I you know, took a seat back and I'm like, shit, that means I have to do this. <laughs> I, have to, I have to be vulnerable too. And it was hard, I'm not going to lie. Any of these values, whether it's being more loving or being more affectionate with someone or being more balanced or whatever it is that your value is, you have to practice it too. And so find ways to start doing that. You will make mistakes. But find ways to, to, to do this. And for me, uh, I started becoming more vulnerable in one work relationship that I never anticipated. And this person held such a safe space for me. I immediately just felt like a safe bubble that I was able to be emotionally vulnerable, which was scary as hell for me. And little by little, I was like, okay, I can do this. I started doing this with all areas in all areas of my life with people. Step four, this is something I just mentioned. Know you are going to make mistakes when you are practicing your core values and embodying them and living them, but release them and move on. And I think it's important because when you do call in your soul tribe, your people, you may not always be so discerning in what it is you're looking for. And I don't mean this also with regards to just your values, but with the people in general. There are a lot of things when meeting people for the first time, when assessing a potential soul tribe member, I will say, like a potential friend or maybe it's a romantic partnership where you have to also assess any red flags, whether or not you feel that energetic uh, vibe. Because some people, they're not meant to stay in your life for a lifetime. It's just a season or I would just say like a split second of a season. And I think that's important too. And when you do have new people coming into your life, you also have to use that discernment to figure out, wait a minute, are we generally or are we genuinely vibing? Is this someone I can see developing a potential connection with? And again, in any capacity, whether it's for work, a friendship or a romantic relationship, don't become desperate and say yes to everything just to have that connection in your life, especially if you do not have a lot of strong connections in your life currently. And I'll say from my experience, when I started really uh, focusing on calling in my soul tribe and made that concerted uh, effort and set that intention, there were a lot of people. I, I, wish, I wouldn't say a lot. I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure people are like thinking like loads of people coming into my life. No. <laughs> But there were quite a few people that came into my life and I knew right away with some that, you know, I think this is a one-time encounter, that's it. And there were a lot of lessons learned. So again, be open and know that you will make mistakes. Be open to learning what these lessons are and that, you, that some of these people that do come into your life, they will teach you things to help you with your next connection that does come in. That could be a potential soul tribe member. Number five, finally. Last step, cultivate and nourish these ties. This is gonna mean something different for everyone because once you have people that come in and you're like, you know, I feel something with this person. I would love to continue working with this person on future projects or I would love to continue developing this friendship or you, maybe with a it's date of romantic potential. Yeah, I'd love to go on a date with them maybe, I don't know, three, four times, who, who knows. Whatever it is, if you see a potential future with this person in some capacity, Define what this relationship means to you. What does being a friend mean to you? What does being a romantic partner or a romantic partnership mean to you? What does a work colleague mean to you? What does it look like? Define those terms and parameters and be clear about it. And for me, 
from the start. I told a lot of my friends because that was something I made a concerted effort for within my soul tribe. I was especially uh, working to call in my, my friends, my friend group, and I really valued reciprocity too. That's a big one for me. And, and balance. And I think I'm just screaming out Libra here. <laughs> But that was something I was pretty upfront with all of my friends. I had someone ask me, you know, could you remind me when we meet up? And I said, no, I'm not your secretary. I have my own shit to do, my own life. I'm a single mom. But what I can do is when we do pick a time to meet, like if you are extending an invitation and you want to meet with me or, or do something, yeah, I'll follow up and be like, hey, are we still on? But otherwise, that's on you. I don't follow up with people in that regard. So get clear on what this looks like because that'll help you nourish these ties and that'll help to cultivating these because friendships are not a one-way street. They are two-way streets. And if you're the only one working on them, obviously there's not a friendship there or whatever relationship. And I should say relationships are like that, not just friendships. Relationships are two-way streets. We each have to bring our part, our work. And I'm not saying it's easy. The best things in life are not easy. They take concerted effort. And that's what any type of soul tribe relationship does. So I hope these five tips helped. If they did, and if you feel called to, please like, share, and comment below. I would love to hear more about you. Give me your experiences if any of you have been working on calling in your soul tribe. And if you'd like to see more videos like these, let me know. Otherwise, I wish you a beautiful day and a journey. Bye.